Hi, Adrian and Ella. It is so great to meet you and get to talk to you. I'm going to dive right in. So, Adrian, your character goes through quite the transformation uh, in <laughs> season three. So, without giving us too many spoilers, can you tell us what uh, Austin's up to at the beginning of season three? Yeah, Austin is really walking through fire this season. In fact, when I when I first read the script for episode one, I was just like beside myself being like, oh my God, he does what? Oh God, no. But like in a very, very satisfying way because he's kind of living his truth. Um, he's just like uh, really delving into the darkest trauma of his childhood and his relationship with his father. And it really digs up a lot of chaos for the family. Um, I'm sorry that you all had to deal with that. <laughs> I was so much fun watching you get to do that. Cause also Adrian is like the nicest person on the planet. So getting to see him cause chaos was just delightful and so out of Adrian character. <laughs> but I feel One. like Austin's journey this, this season is kind of symbolic of the whole season's message in that for any society or person or family to move forward, you have to acknowledge and learn from your history. Mm -hmm. and, and Austin is really grappling with his history um, and, the, and the family we history. We all are, yeah. Um, and I, it, it, it shakes us all up in a kind of great way. Mm -hmm. Well, in Ella, of course, we had uh, quite the revelation at the end of season two. So can you talk about balancing that relationship between Emily and between Austin and the role that your character is going to be playing for us here in the final chapter? It's a really beautiful final chapter for Sue. There's been a lot of growth for Sue between season two and season three, Be mostly because she is now allowing herself to embrace her love for Emily, accept the love that Emily gives her and, and give the love she wants to give. And in doing that, it, she feels allowed to ask for the things she wants in her relationships. And she, you know, we see it in the trailer, we see it across the whole season. She wants the mess. She wants Emily to be all in. And I think it's so awesome to see this character who has been pretty repressed for, for, two, for the first two seasons, to see her like stepping into um, what she wants and her unconventionality in all facets of her life, not just with Emily, but with Austin too. It's, it's an exciting journey for her and I think a lot of people will relate to where Sue is at in her life. I gotta Absolutely. Say it's so satisfying to see Sue like ask for what she needs in this in this season. Yeah. Um from like the first season when you saw her as such a like traumatized um orphan, you know, like she's now so self possessed. You've really gotten to come into these characters. Uh, so I have to ask you both, and I'll take uh, Adrian first. What do you prefer playing in Austin? The, the cheery disposition that uh, you have in real life, or is it more this darker side? Which one do you enjoy? Uh, I, I got to say the darker side really pushed me, um, and I found it taking me to some really, really uh, difficult places in my own life and trying to like dig up w what the analogs were in my life in terms of um, uh, questioning why I do certain things. Um, it, I don't have the same kind of traumas exactly as Austin, but there are def there, this was a year where I definitely had to look inward and be like, why, why am I doing the, why, what maladaptive behaviors do I have? Um, and so honestly, it was like kind of inspirational to watch Austin really like fight these demons because I was like, I, I can do that too. We're, we're going to do this together, buddy. That's so great. And Ella, uh, for you, you've gone from friend to lover. So can you uh, talk about, a bit about that growth in your character over these seasons? You know, I think what's so beautiful about Emily and Sue's relationships, I I Emily and Sue's relationship, not relationships, <laughs> plural, um, is that they are everything all the time. Mm -hmm. They are not just lovers, they are friends, they are sisters, um, they are creative companions, and, and, and that, that is so beautiful to play out with Hayley. We have so much fun 
diving into what that means for each scene. And, and it, it gets really complicated. Like there's a moment this season, which is uh, like historically accurate. Sue um, has notes for Emily on, on a poem called Asleep in Their Alabaster Chambers. Mm. Um, and, and Emily, after Sue gives her notes later in the episode, Emily has, or, or, or uh, later in the season, Emily has questions for why Sue had those opinions, why Sue had that critique. And she can't, she can't take it at face level because they're also in love. They're also in a relationship. Mm -hmm. There's also some jealousy and, and pain underneath the surface. So it does really muddy the water and complicate things. And I love that Elena has written us such a like rich relationship dynamic to dive into. Mm -hmm. And it's our uh, joy as an audience that we get to see it on screen. So last question for you both, and I'll go to Ella first. This piece depends so much on the written word and the power of the written word. So do you have any book or poem recommendations for our audience that you'd like to give? Uh... I recently read, uh, it's a pretty obscure book called Meatless Days. It's by a wonderful Iranian uh, writer. Uh, whose name has completely gone from uh, Sarah Sulieri. Um, and it's a, it's a memoir about her life growing up in Iran. And it is a piece that is also very much about grief like this season. Um, and it's, it's an, uh, it, it, it broke me in all of the right places. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Adrian, do you have one to recommend? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have only just begun to scratch the surface of this body of work, but the uh, the poet Hafiz um, is a favorite of a bunch of friends of mine, and I've I've recently been read some of his poems, and he's just an incredibly joyous poet prophet um, who just like his it, it's like spirituality and play and joy are like all wrapped up into into these words, and even in translation you just feel this massive spirit that, that, yes. that really moves you. So I, yeah, I, I can't wait to read more of Hafiz's poem. I can't wait to dive into that as well. And I just wanna say thank you both for the art and creativity you put into the world. It makes us all richer, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you.